All right, thank you very much. And hello again, dear radio friends. How in the world are you? My heart thrills at the realization that many of you answer me back. You've told me so. When I pause momentarily for you to answer, then you do say, well, I'm fine, or don't ask, or I should have stood in bed, or whatever, you know. (laughs) Well, it's great that we can talk with each other and be together in heart and in spirit and in the enjoyment of God's Word in these few blessed moments that are ours day by day. Thanks for being there, and thanks for being my friend. I appreciate you. Well, we're looking at Mark chapter 3. And the Lord Jesus has gone to church. He was a church-going person. and lets you and I follow his blessed example there. He went in and found somebody with a need. And there again, you and I can follow the example of our Lord in looking for folk who have some needs that we may help to meet as we go into God's house and as we live our lives day by day. And then the last time we got together, we stopped the broadcast right at the point where the Lord Jesus was putting the... Uh, rules having to do with Sabbath keeping, which had been evolved through the tradition of the of the uh, rabbis through centuries, he was putting those rules into the context of eternal truth. And so he says, is it right to do good on the Sabbath? Uh, is it right to save life on the Sabbath? But they didn't say anything. There isn't any answer to a question like that unless you want to put yourself in line with God himself and obey him. Well, it says he looked round about them on anger. Is it ever right to get angry? Well, of course it is. And God gets angry. And Paul says, be ye angry and sin not. I have to remind you that the anger of the Lord Jesus was never directed against people who slighted him. Most of my anger, it must be admitted, has had something to do with my feelings about people's treatment of me. Wouldn't you... Agree that that's true of you as well? Somebody snubs you, somebody lies about you, somebody plots to get your job, somebody cuts you off in traffic, some uh, uh, person who's had too much to drink involves you in an accident, maybe involving injury or even the death of a loved one, and you are angry because of what has happened to you or to those whom you love. Now, that's perfectly uh, predictable because we're human beings. But uh, we have to be reminded that if we're going to follow our blessed Lord, his anger was never caused by what people said or did about him. Even in that ultimate hour of agony, when he had every right to be angry with those who were unjustly accusing him and and then bringing him before before, uh, Herod and before Pilate and then crucifying him and as he hung there, in the extreme agony where every nerve and sinew was screaming with agony, he said, Father, forgive them. He didn't show any anger about things that were done to him. It's a big lesson, isn't it? Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, the Bible says, because it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. You don't have to get angry about things that, that people say and do that affect you. The time to get angry is when there is something said or done that affects the glory of God and the purpose of God and the word of God and the integrity of God's testimony. It says he looked around about them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. Yes, anger. Well, we all experience it. What do you do about it? Well, I have to look inside and see what happens to to Bob Cook because I've I've gotten angry about things. Number one, you identify that anger as to what it really is based upon. I've been telling you that most of our anger comes out of, of the fact that we have been affronted or injured ourselves or someone dear to us has been affronted or insulted or injured so that it is a self-motivated kind of anger for the most part. All right, what are you going to do about it? Number one, recognize it for what it is. Number two, turn your anger over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, channel your anger into constructive action. Want to talk about that? 
Let me give you a story out of my own life. This goes back, I suppose, 20-some years. I was at a hearing having to do with college business and the community. And as I stepped into the room, as I stepped into the room, the chairman of that group greeted me, not with kindness, but with a criticism. He beckoned me up to the uh, desk where he and other members of the committee were seated, and he began to work me over. Now, the reason for it and the details of it have uh, long since passed. It's nobody's concern. What I'm telling you is that I didn't think I had this coming. Before he said good evening, he was telling me what was wrong with, with me and with what I was doing and with what I was trying to accomplish. And uh, I don't know whether he'd had a bad day at the office or what. But I got angry. I really did. Now, God was merciful to me in that he, he kept my mouth shut. And I could very well have spoken out of turn there. But God kept my mouth shut, for which I praise him. And uh, the the incident passed and the evening went on. But when I was got home, I was still as angry as could be. And my dear wife, Corrine, met me at the door. She said, well, dearie, how did it go? I said, don't talk to me. I'm angry. And I just went on upstairs and went to bed. I don't remember if I even said my prayers. <laughs> Well, I woke up about five in the morning still with uh, with anger in me. And I began to realize this wasn't going to this wasn't going to work. And so I got up and got dressed and went down the long hall there in the president's house where we used to live. Down to the end of the hall to the little room at the end of the hall where I used to prepare the broadcasts and uh, in which I did a good deal of praying and meditating and seeking God. So there I was at the end of the hallway in the little room on the second floor of the big white house. And I got down on my knees and I said, Oh God, I'm angry and I can't do anything about it. Please, you've got to handle this. You've got to take care of it. And I waited before him and prayed and read the word and prayed and waited some more. And then after a while, I can't find words to describe this to you, but maybe those of you who've gone through it will uh, will recognize the experience. After a while, I began to feel myself cooling off, so to speak, just as though someone had had opened a valve somewhere and the pressure was being relieved. It was like letting the steam out of a pressure cooker, and I I felt I felt the 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 anger in me being diffused and and just cooling off and disappearing. And then I I felt my my eyes filling with tears as I prayed and worshipped God and asked Him to control my feelings and all of that. Oh, what a delight to give your feelings to God. Have you learned to do that? Uh, Jesus is Lord of all, but that Lordship begins in Philippians chapter 2 with Lordship of your feelings comfort, consolation, and fellowship in the Spirit, and so on. Feelings. Make him Lord of your feelings about things and people. Your anger can be managed if you'll turn it over to Jesus Christ. Anger in itself isn't a sin, but what you do about it may very well result in damage to others and grief, grieving the Spirit of God. Let the Lord Jesus Christ, by his indwelling Holy Spirit, manage your anger. Well, as I said, I re- I waited there before the Lord for a while, and I found that my heart was growing tender, my eyes were wet, and my spirit was submissive, and the pressure was gone. And I could pray for this person who had, had been abusive to me 12 hours before. Huh. Well, you try that for yourself. Now, the next step is, Identify the anger, let Jesus be Lord of it, and then take constructive steps to make something out of it. Oftentimes, if you're angry, for example, at something that has been done wrong in the community, you can take steps to correct it, uh, b- simply because you got upset enough about it to do something. Mothers Against Drunk Driving, for example, is an organization of uh, chiefly of women obviously, 
uh, who are angry enough uh, about the the damage and and uh, death that has come from drunken driving that they're doing something about it uh the same thing happened with a pastor of a little church out in the midwest somewhere who was upset about all the pornographic material that was being uh, that was being pawed over by children and junior high youngsters and high school youngsters at the local stores and he engaged in a one man crusade about it and what do you think the stores began removing all of that terrible literary sewage uh, from their shelves if you get angry enough about something that is worth getting angry over and do something about it, God can use you to change a whole situation. Identify the cause of your anger. Turn it over to Jesus. Do something constructive about it. Now, husbands and wives, maybe you need just a word about this. We do differ as husbands and wives. We have, well, I never have an argument, but we do have discussions. How about you? <laughs> well, in those times when things haven't been quite so smooth at home, what do you do about it? You go away and sulk? Or what do you do? When you've gotten angry and maybe spoken out of turn at home, number one, identify the fact that you're out of line. Number two, say, I'm sorry. And number three, so the two of you seek God's face together. You can't stay mad very long if you'll pray sincerely together. Will you remember that? You can't stay mad at each other very long if you'll pray sincerely together and invite the blessed Spirit of God to be the the bond, Paul says, of perfectness. He's the one that holds people together. We would fly apart by centrifugal force, it seems, if it were not that the blessed Spirit of God, with the love of God he brings into our lives, holds us together. No, your anger, even on a home basis, can be identified as what it is. It can be submitted to Jesus, and the blessed Spirit of God can get you straightened out. Now we talk about this some more the next time we get together. Dear Father, today, may we find that Jesus is managing our emotions, including our anger. I ask in his name, amen. Till I meet you once again by way of radio, walk with the King today and be a blessing. You've just listened to Walk with the King, the ministry of Dr. Robert A. Cook. This program is listener supported. For more information or to find out how you can help contribute to this ministry, write to us at Walk with the King, P.O. Box 43, Trumbull, Connecticut, 06611. Or visit us on the web at walkwiththeking.org. Thank you for your support of this ministry. This has been broadcast number 6385. Thank you for listening to Walk with the King.